Highway 33 in Cloquet is a popular gateway to Minnesota's northern wilderness. It's also a must-stop for Frank Lloyd Wright enthusiasts. Since 1958, there's been a gas station here designed by the famed architect. What do people think of this Frank Lloyd Wright gas station? Well, people are amazed by it. Actually, that's how people know Cloquet is a lot. It's, that's the place with the Frank Lloyd Wright gas station, so it's, it's unique. Chartier has been running the full-service gas station and repair shop since he was in high school. Tell us where have tourists come from all over the world? Oh, all over the world, yeah, honestly. People from China out here buying gas. And they set up easels and do pictures. Always dazzled me is the amount of people that come to look at this place. I think, you know, a lot of people probably see this and scratch their head and wonder, a Frank Lloyd Wright gas station? Why was Frank Lloyd Wright, the undoubtedly most famous architect of the 20th century, who was responsible for you know such important things as the Guggenheim Museum in New York City and Falling Water in Bear Run, Pennsylvania? What's he doing messing around with a gas station? In 1950, R.W. Lindholm, a local oil businessman, tapped Wright to build his home in Cloquet. When he needed to upgrade his gas station, he again went to Wright. It was a coincidence that Wright had been thinking about gas stations all these years. Famously known for the Prairie School design philosophy, Wright later turned his attention to land use planning. In uh, 1932, he published a book entitled The Disappearing City, and that's an aspirational title for him. He thought the cities should go away. Instead, he came up with a replica model called Broad Acre City. The idea was to have semi-agrarian communities across the country. Cars were needed, and so were gas stations. And Wright thought he knew how to design the best one. This is the customer lounge. And the idea was that customers would sit up here and while their time away, waiting for their cars to be repaired. His big idea was that this room would it become a civic center of sorts. There'd be several people sitting around here, uh, perhaps uh, waiting for their cars, and they would uh, discuss the issues of the day. And so th this little room is where the details of democracy would be worked out in Frank Lloyd Wright's uh, you know, brain. With only the sky as your limit, ideas were to be hashed out under this massive 32-foot cantilevered copper roof. Ooh, it's anchored by heavy steel with concrete blocks yeah. at the rear. The building is 62 feet tall. There's also Philippine mahogany in the restrooms, a crisscross cornice, skylights in the auto bays, the architect's signature stamp, and that distinctive font. You know, Ray Lindholm really made a big investment here and, and felt that uh, this was going to attract a lot of people. Uh, people would want to buy gas from him. It cost $75,000, about three to four times more than the average gas station. When Lindholm's heirs decided to sell, the building was a kind of white elephant. In the end, it would go to only a particular kind of buyer. So we've got the old and the new. We do a lot, a lot of the vinyl is reissues. I have a BA in history from the University of Minnesota, right? So I am a bit of a history buff. Volna's company makes vinyl records for the music industry, but the 53-year-old Frank Lloyd Wright fan had been stopping by the station annually for years. I always make a point when I visit a new city to find out if there's some interesting building there, you know, and that's a way to enhance the, the, the road trip. During which time I met the family who owned it, the grandsons of the man who built it, R.W. Lindholm. So we, we knew each other, they knew I was interested in the building. In 2018, Volna closed the deal for $325,000. It included letting Chartier continue on as a tenant. It also came with dozens of original documents. Okay, he opens so them for the first time on our visit. Like, yeah, I guess it's, uh, yeah, I guess. Volna says he didn't buy it to make money. He's now part of a small club of Frank Lloyd Wright building owners. The gas station brings me joy. I like sitting around just thinking about it or knowing that I own it. It's because I'm a collector. And would Frank Lloyd Wright be pleased with his gas station today? I think he would still be very proud of it. Uh, I think he would see that it still works in many ways. It's uh, his dream of, for America uh, is, is symbolized in his mind by this gas station. <laughs>